Oh, yeah, we're that's... live. We're live. <laughs> Good we evening, everyone. Welcome to the Arguments Football Pool Podcast. This title of, sorry, the title of this episode, The Curse of the Cobb. The Curse of the Cobb. I had already titled it Year in Review. My bad. The Curse of the Cobb Year in Review show. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll combine the two. Switzer are looking great in the African garb. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I really like you much better at your uh, at your school. I know it would be better. It would be better. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna be looking up and down a little bit. I got the Raptor game on in front of me, That's so okay. so I, I might react sometimes. But that whatever. Seems, that's only seems fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that only seems fair. Let, let's get to it. Yeah. The lead, obviously. First of all, congratulations to uh, No Sue for You, Daniel Clare. I'm giving it up for him. Sorry, my doorbell is ringing. Oh, it's. I thought you played like a clip to go with. <laughs> no, that's that's just the doorbell. That's your doorbell. That is a crazy uh, doorbell. I'm staying at the at the big house uh, right now, taking care of a dog and a cat. Yeah, uh, so awesome. I'm not in my actual home. I was uh, thinking that's why I have this fancy stuff behind me. Kyle Lowry's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing look. And me and me and Maggie, my wonderful girlfriend, who's in the room watching TV, mm -hmm. um, she. Sorry, I I can't. What, what what were we just talking about? We were talking about Maggie. Something about Maggie. What did you say before it that made me think of it? A big house doorbell. Stay, dogs and cats. Oh yeah, we were gonna to like Airbnb. You could get a dog, and you just take care of the dog, and you get paid. Oh, yeah, and you get paid. Yeah, like I'll look after your dog for a week yeah, while, you're while you're out of town. While you're on vacation and you pay me 500 bucks. 500 bucks? I don't know. You, you charge whatever yeah. you want. My, my wonderful girlfriend, girlfriend, Danielle, who's in the other room, brought me some soup. So I might be off camera eating soup throughout this. Uh, I believe, oh, great. <laughs> you should slurp it like uh, Billy Madison would do at the table with his. How many? With his All right, the lead today, obviously, oh, the curse. Yeah, we should get to it. The, the curse of the cob. Is this the biggest blunder of all time? Is that even a discussion? Uh, no, without a doubt, because he would have won. Either way, he would have won. He says he would have started Brandon LaFell, right. which would have given him a better time. Yeah, I had, I've spoken to the man who's not feeling so good about That's what true. happened. Yeah, either way, Brandon LaFell, Lee, it doesn't matter. Either way, he would have won. What happened was Kyle had some – sort of commitment at five in the morning or something. And he was out of his house since five, never went home, didn't have a chance to look at his computer, has the app on his phone. There's no real excuse. No, you know what? The real reason there's no excuses. There's two reasons, big reasons. A, they're his favorite team. Yeah, they're his team. Like if it was another team, it would be less offensive. Yes. But they're his team. He should know. B, any week when you know you're not going to be ready to set them up, never mind the championship week. Contact you go, friend, you go to a friend and you say, hey, do me a favor. Take a quick check of my lineup right before the game start, and if they're not there, give me a quick up. Do, do or a quick even up. at 11 or uh, 1230 when you know you're not going to do it, do it, it right now. Yeah, it's bad. Anyways, yeah. Inexcusable. In, yes, inexcusable, I think. I had people calling me and texting me and asking if this is like something like, like is, is him losing punishment enough? It is punishment enough. I know, I hate that for you. There's no, there's no probation, there's nothing. We know Kyle's a good manager. Yeah. Can I say, though, can I say as a manager of a two-time champion and you as a manager of a two-time champion, I couldn't be happier that he lost. Oh, yeah, that was great. Such a good great. And, and I'm sure Stephen Gray feels the same way. And he stays at one and a half champions championships. One and a half. One and a half. Don't forget about Blitzer. I, I actually called Blitzer after the last podcast. <laughs> I told him about the mention of Yacht's Blitz that he's, he he retold the story of how they started the team. Good good times. Good times. Unbelievable. So yeah, the 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 biggest blender of all time, no doubt. I don't even really think I can think of anything that compares in the least. There's no way. There's no way. It's a championship match. The Nobody reason, has ever lost the championship off of a off of a managerial mistake. Of course, and the reason, starting someone instead of someone else. Right. But there's no way of not starting of, someone that's out. No, terrible. And the reason there can there be no no punishment in any way is because it doesn't affect anyone but himself. And, and he lost the pool. That's punishment enough. Yes, exactly. 
So that will, oh my God, Terrence Ross just had a wild 360 dunk. I'm sure you all see it on highlights. If you're I, not, I can't, I can't watch. They don't, they don't get it there. Well, I, I have no cable and that, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm using my computer for something else. That would explain it. It's 78, 76 with nine minutes left. Raptors, yeah. Raptors on keep us posted. You're really time stamping this podcast right now. Yeah, that, yes, yes. All right. So, moving on. No we super. Could, we could talk about it all day. Of course. Okay, put a bow on it. Rapids, you lost. I'm sure Rapids it'll come up a few more times throughout the rest of the of the cast as well. For sure. But congratulations to Claire. Like we're sitting here, and it, it's almost like the Seahawks lost Super Bowl, right? Exactly. We sit here and we talk about the loser. And, and, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to Nosu for you, Dean Clare. They made it all the way there. They put themselves in a position to win where just one blender got them a victory. And also put up a, a respectable score. A respectable score. A, a good score. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go on to Nosu for you, actually. The big question this week, should we have gotten Gerlach? <laughs> that is a good, I mean, there were like, – I would have – where's Garrett Schur and Nasser when you need them? Oh, man, Nasser and Hussein. That was like those guys came into the pool, won one game all year, and got kicked right out. That's sure. the type of team we need to be invited. But they won one game all year because of the stupid deal that they made, which got them kicked out in the first place. Actually, they didn't. That deal never went through, obviously. Right. But the, the dream team, as they were formerly dubbed, right? And Garrett. I miss. I, I, I mean, Nasser plus Garrett equals greater than Claire. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Garrett's a uh, new friend, uh, uh, Jesse Witch of the Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> yes, yes. We could have got him in the pool too. That would have been a better, a better fit than Claire. Uh, and really, at this point, anybody would have been better than Claire. And I'm not sure if his winning seals him an invite to next year or disbars him from an invite to next year. The man will be in the pool for years. I, to I joke. I joke. I know you joke, uh, but uh, he's better than Ari. What? So what, what, oh, well, without a doubt. But it, so, okay, I want to know in the pool, there are there a few people that don't know Claire. Or is it just because I know Joe doesn't know Claire, and he's like, who is this joker that comes into our pool and beats us right away? Are there is there anybody else that doesn't know him? I think we'd have to assume that likely, Fear. likely Tobe doesn't know who he is. Right. Fear. Fear and Fear and Claire know each other. Okay. Went to uh, they went to to university together. Oh, I see. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Mogul like knows know each other. I'm That's sure. always an interesting deal. Yeah, 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 for sure. Anyways, a lot of people didn't know. Did you say Ove? Did you call him Ove? No, I called him Fear. Oh, I called him Ove. <laughs> I, try, I, try res- I, I, I try to respect him. I, I also do. And uh, I thought you called him Ove, so I brought it up anyway. So now Ove has been dropped, which is <laughs> – I tried. I tried. I'm pretty sure he's the only one in the podcast that doesn't watch this. Well, Rapage, I know, doesn't watch it. Because I said to him, I said, Rapage, we're about to do the podcast. And if you're very upset about what happened, I suggest you probably don't watch it. And his <laughs> response was, I don't. I haven't watched any of the podcasts, so I don't know why it started now. A little shade. He threw a little shade. Well, you know what? I'll say this. Uh, the working half of his brain didn't get this one that right. <laughs> About apparently, now yeah. I feel free to throw as much shade at Rapids as possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great. So, anyways, that that's mostly what I have. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we let's put a bow on it. The championship is clear. Rapids fucked up large. Let's let's move on to to recognizing some other teams in the pool. Let's go to the to the uh-huh. arguments football pool awards. Used to be annual. We'll make it annual again. It's been a few years, but in this medium, it's a lot easier to get it out than me spending 45 minutes typing up an email or even longer. Right. But let's get to it. Let's get to it. The first award. And, and you know what? I'll, I'll say what the award is. I'll give the description of the award. I'll allow mm-hmm. you to guess. I have to guess. Okay. We get the list of teams up. The first award of the year, the face of the year. Rapage. Of course, it goes to <laughs> Team Rapage. <laughs> that's, that's the easiest one. And we've talked about it already quite a bit. It's obvious why he's the face of the year, and obvious he should be the face of can the we, year. 
can you just do me a favor? <laughs> because I don't know that everybody in the pool knows what face is short form for. Face is idiot face. So you're idiot. the, you're the idiot. biggest idiot. idiot. You're the largest idiot in the pool. That's right. For the biggest idiot in the pool. Now the idiot, you, idiot, the, the face award goes to the biggest idiot face in the pool. That is absolutely correct. Now, what's really interesting about this award for Rapage is originally, last week I was talking about it with some guys. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the awards, and we talked about the manager of the year award. And if that, should, it might be him. if that should automatically go to the winner or if it goes to the guy who managed his team the best. And I think it's the second one, the guy who managed the best, obviously. The guy that was going to win the manager of the year award going into this week was Rapage. Mm -hmm. Well, now he's the face of the year. And he goes from manager to face of the year with one terrible move. Wow. Wow. That's sad. Which brings That's us not, We to, don't need to talk about it anymore, though. Let's which brings us to the Manager of the Year Award. Manager of the Year Award. Jeez. Who's the best manager? Is it not Nosu? I don't know how, who else it's going to be. It's not Nosu for you. Okay. And I'll explain why. Nosu for you didn't do as much as this guy as a manager. To and is it because this guy's getting Nosu for you? He's going to be like the Rookie of the Year or something That's like that. That's the next word. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe this guy is who did the most. I don't know. I don't know. The manager of the year is Brian Tobe of Team Chargers. Yeah, yeah, did a lot. Now, That's so sad. It breaks my heart to give him more. I know. It's a tough one to give. But let's summarize why. Okay, let me hear it. Tobe picked Arizona as his defense in the ninth round. A terrible pick. Way too early mm -hmm. for a defense. Very bad. Which you would think is him on his way to picking his three defenses, as he usually does. But he didn't. He refrained. He picked one defense this year in the draft. So he learned from previous mistakes yep. and has moved forward. Give he, credit where credit's due. He made the most moves in the or the most trades, I should say, in the mm -hmm. league to further his team. The most notable of those trades was he got Greg Olson for Deshaun Jackson and Chris. That Dino. was a good trade. Great trade for him. Uh, maybe the trade of the year besides the O Dogs trade. Where I was so sad when that trade was happening because I was working on Greg Olson for weeks. Well, well, Jordan Simon of the O-Dog gave up Alshon Jeffrey and then he was injured for the rest of the season until two weeks ago. So it wasn't – it shouldn't really go down as the trade of the year because – Well, like because it's out of control, right? Exactly. But it ended up being a great trade for – Did I, you go through every trade in, 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 in well, preparation? Looked, there was very little trades. I just looked up all the trades. There was like 20. Yeah. Is that average? Is that above? I think that's a little bit below. There was, there was nothing really of any significance in the. There way. was nothing. There were no trades in the pool for like the first eight weeks. Yeah, there was nothing, and, and nothing. And then it, no and then it now. Were significant, really? Like. Yeah, no crazy one. That Olsen one was pretty big, though. So. I almost pulled the low pro. I almost pulled the trigger on a ten man deal with Team Shack, and I couldn't do it. Well, that would have been um, maybe the probably Shane the Newton and other folks involved. Probably was, the biggest trade in the history of the pool. We, that's why I couldn't pull the trigger. I was like, I have no idea how this is going to end up. <laughs> I'm trading my entire team for your entire team, and you're much worse off than me in the standings. That's <laughs> well, <laughs> the next award, as you mentioned before, the Rookie of the Year. Obviously, there's one rookie. rookie for you. So uh, it was the easy way to go. The, the next award is a creative award. It's the Mr. Luciano Award. It is named for Charles Lucky Luciano. <laughs> I don't know who that is. He was a guy, he was a mobster who was a Vegas personality. In, I think can, I, can I just poke a little fun at you for the low, like, humble brag? This is a creative award. Well, have you ever <laughs> you heard made of the award? Mr. Luciano Award. Yeah, okay. It's a lot more creative than face manager. Did I, rookie. Win, it? Did I win it? Is that, is that the deal? You won the award, hey, Switzer. Hey, I won the lucky Luciano Award. You are the Mr. Luciano of the pool. The reason being, your 1,282 points was the second least given up in the pool. To, uh, sorry, the, this, yeah, the second least given up in the pool next to the Chargers, 1,280. And your 1,339 was the least of all in the playoffs and fourth least in the pool altogether. And there you yeah, are. But I think if you actually looked at me week by week, you'd see my wins are all pretty legit, just, except for like one of them maybe. And this is my losses. I was just like so brutal. And, just threw like, up a bunch of bricks. What's that? Threw up a bunch of bricks. 
Yeah, in like in my, in my wins, there's only one week. Like there's one week in which I win with 81 points, but every other win that I have is with over 100 points, and only one of them is with less than 115 points. It's just that in my losses, I scored 70 points, 82 points, uh, you know, uh, 81 points, right. right? Yeah. Oh, I had another win with 95 points, sorry, later on in the season. Anyways, that's what you get, man. You're, you're lucky Luciano. Yeah, all right, whatever. Fuck it up. On him. He's an interesting figure in history, American history. Okay, great. <laughs> that's great. That's just, not, I'm, necessarily I'm, good, not necessarily a good man. I'm just happy to be mentioned in the same uh, sentence as him. There you go. Good, good shit. <laughs> good shit. Okay, continue. The next award is the This Ain't Tier 2 Award. Uh, it goes to Terrell Pryor Sr. Terrell Pryor Sr.? <laughs> Yeah, great, great college quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I couldn't let the podcast pass without a Terrell Pryor senior. You got you to gotta mention Terrell Pryor at some point. <laughs> sorry, continue. Uh, oh, this, is, this isn't tier two. That's the Matt Mogul. Uh, is this going to be get renamed the Matt Mogul Award? Tier, the- it, should, it should just be the Matt Mogul Award. This a two, tier two award goes to Matt Mogul of the Blunt Force Trauma. He just came off his fifth championship. In tier two. Fifth in a row? Four in a row? I don't think fifth in a row. I know he's in the finals like every year. His fifth fifth championship compared to the one he's had in uh, that. Money. What am I why aren't I in that pool? Why is it so let me ask. We must ask the question again. Why did we not have Gerlock in our pool? Exactly. A a, a perennial struggle in the tier two, I believe, is is Gerlock. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But yeah, his fifth championship, unbelievable. Very, the very. The of the year should be you for allowing Claire in this pool over girls. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the face of the year, in my opinion. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. Fast break. So. I, we could get, if we could get some uh, comments on that, I'd appreciate it. Me face of the year? Well, I think that I actually had a pretty good year. Yeah, but you. Oh, I, 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 oh man, I didn't even I didn't even give myself an award. I'll give my I know what I'm gonna give myself. Well, you know you get your you get to give yourself an award. I'm gonna give everyone an award. <laughs> okay, sorry. Continue. Everyone deserves an award, and everyone deserves. what is this? Uh, participation trophies. Oh uh, yes, yeah. I'm a nice guy. Good commissioner. Very fair. Very fair. Very fair. <laughs> Nothing if not fair. Is that's that's Herbie Sacks. <laughs> who's, the, who's the mobster we can name you after? <laughs> uh, who's the fairest mobster around? I, I, I don't know. I, the Godfather. Call me the, the Godfather. The, Godfather. Marlon, the Marlon Brando Award. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, Vito. You got it, buddy. Here, the next award, one of my favorite awards on the list, the John Forb Nash Jr. Award. Who? John Forb Nash Jr. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1994 for economics for his landmark work on the mathematics of game theory. Oh, this is this is the John Zack award. That's true. That is absolutely right. And he, (laughs) wait, did you know who that was, or did you look that up? Have you ever seen the Oscar-winning movie *A Beautiful Mind* with Russell Crowe? I haven't haven't seen that. Well, there is a movie about him. He was, I think, he had some problems, some issues, some mental issues. (laughs) So does John. But there you go. And but he's very good at math, and uh, John has proved time and time again that he is the mathematician. Oh, John wins an award. It's not based on anything to do with this team, just based on his posts. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What's there to say about his team? You might as well just just prop up his his posts. His team was okay. He almost limped into the playoffs, just missed it. Dude, but uh, I think his a loss to the lucky Lucianos. <laughs> with what, 95 points. What would that's, you, you know that's going to be my team name next year. The Lucky Luciano. You're going to change it from Switzer after all these years? Well, one time I won with Team AJ Rice. So, like, I feel like awesome. I, you know, the Lucky Lucianos, that's going to be my team name next year. That's that's good. It's a good name. I'm, I'm happy that I gave you, I inspired you. <laughs> you have inspired me. <laughs> you, the, the Godfather has inspired yet again. <laughs> what would you say John Zach's uh, of of Rams own, what do you what would you say his biggest impact on the pool this year was? I don't know, nothing. Like he posts, make great posts. His mathematical post. Of yeah. 
That's for fair. sure. And there That's he is. That's Moving on to the Mr. Cellophane. Actually, you know what? If I could just add, put a bow on that for a second. And uh, he also enlightened me as to the issues with the Yahoo app for the message board, not formatting his post properly. Oh, yeah. That he was me. figured out some problems with the Yahoo. Oh, yeah. That's true. We should write them an email and say, <laughs> we say the, the winner of the John Forb Nash Jr. Award in our pool rec uh, was able to discover some faults with their system. That's right. Okay, next, okay, so next year, like if he's a real John Ford Nash. Junior. Junior? Yeah, John okay. Ford Nash Junior. If he's a real John Ford Nash Junior, next year, I want to see his projections. Fuck Yahoo's projections. Yeah, that's, John Ford Nash Junior projections. That's an, a great call out. John, John Ford Nash Junior, as you're now known. <laughs> that's right. I look forward to the projections next year. That'll be awesome. That will be good. All right. Sorry, one sec. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Raptors up 86, 84, 345 left. Well, my phone just alerted me. Terrence Ross delivers mesmerizing dunk. Oh, yeah. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. I just got alerted to that. <laughs> it was pretty wild. Anyways, the Mr. Cellophane Award. Uh, there's a song from the musical Chicago that goes, Cellophane, Mr. Cellophane, <laughs> my name, Mr. Cellophane, because you can look right through me, walk right by me, and never know I'm there. Cellophane, otherwise known as Saran Wrap, you can see right through it. It, it basically doesn't exist. It's a very it, – no one ever mentions him. No one ever talks about him except we have this, this podcast. So, okay, I've narrowed it down to two choices. Basically, Mr. Irrelevant Award. Yeah, I've narrowed it down to two choices. Okay. It's either the Fear Boners or mm -hmm. Yasta. Number one pick was the right one, the Fear Boners. You're doing well at this game. I mean, listen, when you name these awards as well as you name them, it makes my job very easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a creative guy. You're very creative. You're very creative. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. If uh, I could just point out, even no. though I've, I've guessed well, we made a purp we purposely said that I would not know the answers before we started. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did. We and I. Well, you you. No, you've gotten every single one right so far. Oh no, manager of the year. You didn't. Manager of the year. So the Mr. Cellophane Award, Matt Margulies of the Fear Boners. Basically, he's never been mentioned in this podcast. No one ever talked about his team. It wasn't really a scary team. It kind of contested a little bit, but he usually has a team that's like in it. But yeah. can I say that he's probably the front runner to be the next person out of the pool? I've heard this said before, but he sets his lineup every week. He makes his moves. I agree. I don't think he's going to be in the near future. What I'm saying is, if I had to guess, if I had to make a pick of the person that if I had to pick one person in the pool that will not be in this pool five years from now, him. It's not a bad pick, for sure. Last, uh, a couple days ago, I was with um, a couple managers, Daniel mm -hmm. Clare, Kyle Rapid, Jordan Simon, and we talked about... Sounds like a, a usual foursome. Yeah, of course. We talked about the pool 20 years from now. Someone said, do you think it will exist 20 years from now? And I said, yeah. I don't see why not. We're 14 years in. Going strong, stronger than ever. We're podcasting about it now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the, the disappointment of the year award. Team Shaq. No. Mm. The No Throws Football Company. No. Okay, I'm done guessing. Oh, I, okay. I'll give a little description to the award. This is an award for a guy, a disappointing team, a team that looked really strong, looked like it was going to do a lot of damage and just kind of fell off the map and did nothing. Nice. Probably still would have guessed Team Shaq, but my second guess instead of Team Shaq would be the O Dog. The team is the Terrible Tower. Ah, the Terrible Towers. See, midseason they looked so good, didn't they? In our first podcast that we did, you took them as your team to watch, your team to beat in this pool. Yeah, I did. I, I, I didn't see how they could be beat. At that time, they're coming off two like 150 plus point weeks. Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown was looking amazing, and just kind of fell off the map. Didn't even didn't even get into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Had a chance, a slight chance, but didn't get there. Yeah, yeah. No, had a very little chance according to the John Ford Nash uh, junior predictions. Uh, the, the percentage chance? It was like less than 5%, I want to say less than 10% for sure. There you go. And John Ford Nash, he knows. Junior, John Ford Nash, junior, he knows. He's a smart dude. 
That's why he won the award. He won the 1995 Nobel Peace Prize? Uh, 94, I believe. Yeah, 1994. For his In the midst landmark, of the baseball strike, this guy was still crunching the numbers. For his landmark uh, work in, the, in mathematics of game theory. <laughs> and you would think, 1994, baseball is about to go on strike. This is an all-time low for statistics. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 I can tell you that uh, the MLB guys were definitely not in the running for the Nobel Prize for economics that year. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely nobody in Montreal, that's for sure. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so now the Too Little Too Late Award. Ooh, the Too Little Too Late Award. O-Dog. The O-Dog had yeah. the terrible – I believe he was one in six – uh, let me. I got it right here. Let me. Let me tell you right now. He finished six and seven. Won his last three. Had a decent point total. Yeah, won five of his last six. Won five of his last six. Just that horrible start. There was that point in our first podcast. We did it. The three guys at the bottom of the pool were the O Dog, uh, Jack and Juso. Exactly. Yeah. No thrills. Yeah. And he. Oh yeah, no thrills. Yeah, I mean, looking at it, the five five losses to start the year, right? And he ends six and seven. Pretty. So he goes he goes six and two the rest of the way. But like you said, he, it's too little, too late. Yeah. Had he made the in week, after week seven, he's one and six. It's, it's had, season. Had he, had he somehow made the playoffs, he probably would have been a front runner for manager of the year. But just <laughs> the terrible start just killed him. So what is the award? The too little, too late award. The too little, too late award. Okay. There's nobody you could have named that after? Okay, let's think about it. <laughs> like, I feel like there's got to be someone synonymous with, with it, like the R.A. Dickey Award for a terrible start. <laughs> that would be a good one. But there are, it's got to be worse than that. I don't know. I, I just think – I'm just thinking someone off the top of my head is perennially with a bad starter. I, I should have. I lost my creativity as I went on. Actually, I didn't. This next award is pretty sweet. <laughs> Okay, let me, let me hear it. The next award is the Prozac Award. Inspired by the 1998 hit Sucks to Be You by Prozac. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Team Joseph? No, it's Team Shaq. Ah, Team Shaq is a perennial loser. Yeah, a perennial bottom feeder. Eric Switzer of Shaq, the Sucks to Be You a Prozac Award. Um, the reason is... 1588 points against 1588 points against the most in the pool that is the most in the pool by 105 holy shit leading to a 3 and 10 record huge shot from DeRozan no good 24 seconds left to it but you know when you look at his team right he loses you know his losses are all he doesn't have like an incredibly high point to total with a loss he loses with 106 points twice loses with 101 points twice with 102 points once like he doesn't have that like if you look at odox you know sucks to be you oh, lost to the highest point total a couple times right like odog you look at some of his losses you you remember that monday nighter like with uh Devontae freeman i mean odogs had some had some real tough losses yeah, that was a real tough one um, you know, Odog had losses with 132 points, 119 points. You know, like that's that's he wins those two. He's he's in the playoffs. Yeah, crazy. So I mean, and then like I said, I don't know if one of those. Is, yeah, one of those is he loses. I won 2078 to 11950. I would like uh, to challenge the John Forb Nash Jr. Award winner John Zach to go into the history of the pool and find the most ever points against, because I think. Eric Switzer might challenge. Yeah, 1588 is a stupid high number. Crazy. 105 more than Joe. I, I want to hear this. So let me just look this up. You said he's had, he had 1588, you said, right? Yes. Divided by 30. Is that including the playoffs or that does not include the playoffs? I believe it doesn't. <clears throat> um, that's 122 points a week. That is that's a high number. Crazy. That's a high number. Yeah, it's crazy. That's a, and you know, a deserving winner of the Prozac Award. A great award. A great, great award, if you do say so yourself. One of my favorite awards. I've probably ever come up with. <laughs> Inspired by the – did you know that was from 1999, or did you have to look that up? Uh, 98. I looked it up, obviously. <laughs> okay. Just, 
I looked at the point totals. I was like, holy crap, that sucks for him. Sucks to be him. Oh, that was a great song. Sucks to be you. I know, I know. Great song. <laughs> so everybody's like, two, two awards were named after songs. Mr. Cellophane and the Pro Cycle Award. Yes. That's when you that was my favorite. That was my favorite. Mr. Selvin was my favorite because you started off by saying, "In the musical Chicago." <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably the first ever fantasy sport award given out for a musical. Right. I can't wait for the guys and dolls reference next. There is no guys and dolls, unfortunately. There should have been the Luck Be a Lady Tonight award would be would, Lucky Luciano. What happened to Lucky Luciano? Maybe next year we'll change the award type. A uh, title, I mean. <laughs> Next time. Just a couple more here. The how does it feel that. award. How does it feel award. How does it feel? How does it feel? I, I don't know. It goes to Stephen Gray of the No Thrills Football Company. Two-time winner, two years in a row, and just had a brutal season. But you give it up to a two-time champion. Unbelievable. It was great. The only person in the history of the pool to do it on back-to-back -back years. Very, very impressive nonetheless how does it feel to be in 10th or a four or 12th 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 i i can't talk shit i've been there too many you know where well, you, you're been there many times too. crap you've been there how does it feel to be there terrible exactly yeah <laughs> that, that, that's there's the award good okay moving on yeah you don't like that award i like the award it, it's a bit of a reach it's it, it's low on your creativity scale when you're coming up with 14 awards, it's tough to come up with good ones for all. I'm a nice guy, though. I'm a fair guy. You're a fair guy. That, nobody has done – is that the award you're going to win? The fair guy award. Maybe. The fair no guy with fair – The no matter what, I beat Sacks again award. Ah, Joseph. Joseph. Guy wins three games. It's horrible. Maybe the worst team ever. Taking on a pretty good team in my team. It did very well this year. Beat me again, gets free entrance to the pool for probably the like eighth year and nine, eighth time in nine years. Just Team Joseph averaged eighty-seven points a week this year. Brutal. That's that is. I'm challenging the John Ford Nash Jr. Award winner to find out if that's the lowest number in pool history. And he could have been given the Face of the Year award for just horrible drafting, bad trading, whatever, but. It's obvious who the face of the year award was to go to. Joseph had some bad. He had some bad breaks. He, you yeah. know, the the whole. Uh, but like he he at the beginning of the season, if you he had these, you look at his running backs, and it looked like he had, it was going to be like dominant. He had Jamal Charles, Adrian Peterson, and uh, Jeremy Langford, and it was like wow, that's some strong running backs. The injury bike hit hard. Yeah, and really yeah, hard. it is. It, it was tough year for him. But he beat me, and he got free, he got a free pool. So good for him. Okay. Yeah, good for him. Okay. Next. There's two awards left. Mm -hmm. This award is the worst award for sure that I could come up with. It's the oh. you. I couldn't even think of an award to give you award for that's just. That's not. Doesn't sound very fair. I, I, you just you just had nothing nothing special about him that I could think of to, to Isn't this the Mr. Cellophane Award? Kind of. Kind of. But his team was actually good and and, and contended and made the play. Mr. Cellophane did. No. This winner did. Mr. Cellophane didn't make the playoffs. And this person is? Team Yasta. Team Yasta was worse than Mr. Cellophane, yet fear bonus. Oh, Fear you're bonus right. is eight, Yasta's eleven. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so Yasta, listen, here's what you got. You got the Fairness Award for the team that gets an award because Herbie is so fair. There you go. Great. That, that's mean, the award. Like, that's there a is better, no award here. That is a great, a way you better got, time. What, you're going to get awarded for this? A participation trophy for having participated in the pool. Thank you for your loyal membership. I uh, <laughs> really appreciate you having a part of it. And I have no doubt you'll be with us for in that 20 years from now picture. I see y Team Yasta solidly in 11th place again. And all, and obviously a very cherished member of the of, of the pool. Being the one to tell on the dream team of Nasser and Garrett back in the day and, and furthering the integrity of the pool to an all-time high.
Totally agree. And that, and another reason that he deserves the Fairness Award. Fairness Award. You're right. I'm glad you're here that you could help me come up with a better title. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. That's the only reason you're glad I'm here. And the last award <laughs> is the Adam Silver Award given out for the fairest commissioner. Adam Silver, <laughs> Adam Silver gave great, uh, great support in the uh, Donald Sterling saga. Very fair to the black and white players of the NBA. <laughs> As right. often fair to all members of the arguments football pool. All the Jewish members of the uh, Yeah. Well, we're not very diverse. Well, we have a we have a non-Jew. We do? Yeah, Ju Joseph. Ju Dean Joseph? Yeah. He's a Jew. No. What do you mean he's not a Jew? He's a Jew. He's a Jew? I never, I never thought Joseph was a Jew. This is probably <laughs> This is probably the best part that's come of this podcast for sure. <laughs> that you found out that Joseph is a Jew. For the last 14 years that I've known Joe Krimker, I thought he was non-Jewish. He's a Jew. He's yeah. not a very like serious Jew, but who is? Well, I don't think we have any serious Jews. Oh, yeah, the terrible towel is pretty serious. Is he? I think so. No, like no soup for you has Shabbat dinners on the reg. Yeah, but that doesn't make you serious. That means you like chicken. You might as well be black. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Am I not allowed to make that joke? Because there's no, um, there's no. Man, black we might have to delete these podcasts in the future when I'm trying to get a broadcasting job. They find a podcast I've made that makes border borderline racist comments. I guess I made the joke first of all. Second of I all, I associate myself with this man. His views are not necessarily the views of me. Okay, one second, one second. You don't want to call me a racist, okay? No, not at all. One second, one second. I, my team, Cam Newton, black. Mike Wallace, black. <laughs> Teddy Griffin, black. Jeremy O, black, okay? I have an all black. I have Zach Ertz. We Zach might have to. Brandon McManus, and I'm sure there's a couple black guys on Los Angeles people. We might have to. Wait, wait one second. I have to do a tiny bit of research here. One sec. Because <laughs> my team is – it has one black player on the whole team. Is Brian Quick black? I don't know. I don't know what he looks like. You're I'm going to give – I'm going to change your, your title. No, obviously your title of, what, of your award, the, uh, the Mr. Luciano Award, is great and, and will stick. But another one you could have won <laughs> is, the, is the NAACP Image Award. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I could, I could never, the NAACP award. Yeah, for your commitment to the furtherment of African American rights and and and. and can I, can I propose something? I, as long as we're on the subject, can I propose something? Yeah. The next time there's an opening in the pool, we have like a Rooney Rule esque type deal where we have to interview at least one black person. Sure, Ken, Ken from the from ba from basketball. I don't know. Yeah. What okay, we have to interview at least one black person for that opening. A really oh, no. last deal. I don't know if you've seen No Suit for You lately. He's in San Diego. He gets pretty, pretty dark. <laughs> I haven't seen him recently, no. He's a very, very dark man. And if we can get him to post a picture on the pool, that'd be great. I'm sure he'll do that for us. <laughs> Is that all the awards? Anyways, that does it for the 2016 Arguments Football Curse of the Cobb Awards. That was great. Next, I year's title? Really Next year's title for the pool? What do you think? Curse of the Cobb? I was thinking. I don't think so. That's um, not, it doesn't fall in line with the arguments. Yeah, the Cobb, the Cobbless Arguments fo Football the Pool. Cobbless Arguments Football Pool? That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's or, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's probably the best. The cobbler. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Let Rathage's mistake live on for an entire season. And, and he'll hate that name, but I think he'll be okay with it. If The more he hates it, the more I love it. My bold prediction, Kyle Rapage of Team Rapage doesn't win a championship for 20 years. The curse of the cob. The curse of the – I like that. 20 years. I like that. That's a great – that's a great bold prediction. Here's my bold prediction. No sue for you. Last place next year. Oh, good. Good prediction. I like it. <laughs> okay. It's been real, Herb. I love this. I want to do this more often next year. It's been a great year. We'll next year I want to have guests. We'll be back next year. Can you invite guests or do I have to have them in nope. my home? Nope. I can invite them. I can oh, invite God. them. To oh, I, wish, we, I wish we could have got uh, No Suit For You live from San Diego to join us. Can we try them right now? 
I, he probably won't answer quick enough. Does he have an Android phone? Yes. Then he can have it on his phone. He has it on his phone. Yeah, Google Hangouts. That's all you need. He's brought, he, I, he, he, I've messaged him, but he's very long on the on the on the returns. It's all okay. right. All right. Well, next time we'll get, maybe we'll we should do an off season podcast. Or we'll get it in the preview show for 2017. Cobbless arguments. Cobble. We have to have Rapids on too. And oof, ooh, ooh. that would be top. A tougher guest to get. Tight, tight. Quite the crossfire that would be. Well, if we get the four, the four of us. Well, I mean, like the two of them, you know, arguing. Yeah, it'd be great. That is the name of the pool. That is. That okay. does it for the 2016 Arguments Football Pool Year in Review, Curse of the Cobb Show. Switzer, it's been an absolute pleasure doing this with you. Take care, buddy. Nice shirt. Nice Thanks, buddy. Round. Ditto, I, my friend. A pleasure. I hope when this ends, that shirt stays on. Oh, look at the shirt you're wearing, too, and we're talking about racism. That is a <laughs> – yeah, I'm not racist. I'm wearing their garb. <laughs> Who? Whose garb? There? Those people? <laughs> See you later, Herbie. Later, buddy. It's been Everybody. a good time. Thank you.